Hello, and welcome to Talking Shop with CTEX. Hello, I'm Dr. Ellen Solek. I am honored to be the district leader for CTEX, the Connecticut Technical Education and Career System. As you know, we are now our own agency, and with that independence comes our opportunity to recognize some amazing programs, and more important, the people who run those programs. Today, I am so excited to introduce to you Mrs. Margaret Ortiz. Margaret is currently the supervisor of bilingual education and all things bilingual in the district. And today, Margaret is here to talk with us quite a bit about bilingual learners, multilingual learners, and even more especially in our district, something called the seal of biliteracy, which we're going to talk more about today. Margaret, welcome. We're so glad to have you. Thank you, Dr. Solik. It's an honor to be here. It's a privilege to be part of your um, recording and podcast, and thank you for having me as your guest. Absolutely. So let's start just, I'd love our audience to know more about you and more about your wonderful history because you arrived at CTEX well before I did from places unknown to most of us. And, and if you would be so good as just to share a bit of your background with us and really what brings you to the point, the wonderful point of leadership that you have reached um, at CTEX after so many years. We'd be anxious to hear your story. Sure. Um, so I come to I came to Connecticut as part of an initiative of um, banks in Connecticut to recruit more Latino um, employees. So I was recruited right in Puerto Rico. I left my island because of my bilingualism, and I came into the area of Waterbury because of the fact that I was bilingual in Spanish. So there in Connecticut, I was in, in Waterbury, I was for 10 years when I had a wonderful customer, Dr. Quinones, who was um, leading an initiative of CTEX to hire more Latino and African American uh, teachers in the areas of science and mathematics. So she recruited me, and I have been with CTEX since 2001. That's a long time. Uh, in, in most of our careers, we make moves that, that would be much more frequent, and yet you came all the way from the island of Puerto Rico, and you really have become an integral member of the CTEX family. And, and you were sharing with me earlier that you've been at several different schools since you arrived. Um, and you and I also chatted the other day, and you shared with me that you have family in Puerto Rico and uh, that you've been checking in, obviously, as a result of the recent hurricane and hopefully everyone is doing well yes everyone is doing well thank you for asking uh, we are a very resilient people so no matter what comes our way we're always gonna try to stand up stronger so uh, that continues to be the case and that's exactly how I am so through my history with CTEX I have continued and further my education which has facilitated the opportunity to continue to move forward with my career that is wonderful. Um, something you cited a minute ago, which just kind of sent chills through me, which is highlighting the fact that when students and staff come from places other than the United States to come be a part of CTEX, there's a natural sense of resiliency and strength, as you just said. And that certainly is a, a wonderful requirement that all of our staff and students strive to have. But could you talk a little bit more about what that experience is? What is it that brings out that sense of strength and resilience, knowing that you're coming from another country, mastering another language or languages? And, and what, what kind of impact does that have in terms of our student learners and our staff at CTEX? Well, I think particularly for our bilingual students or multilingual students, um, those that are identified as um, English learners, they, they bring with them the interest to be part of a new culture. They are here, so they want to have that sense of belonging. 
um, and they are learning a second language, which makes them more resilient. They're, they're not going to give up on the opportunity to acquire uh, a new instruction of a new language. So that's why I feel that when you have to learn a second language, you become more resilient and you don't give up because that is the opportunity that you have. What a wonderful gift. And that's a gift that translates to, to students and staff around those students travelers new to our country and that's just amazing. I, I don't think many of us really realize that um, and as you had cited earlier in our conversation it it's almost a natural inclination as teachers that we would make the assumption that if students aren't speaking or haven't mastered English let's say and they're speaking predominantly in their native language that perhaps you know we need to adjust the instruction and sort of lower the standard because they might not understand and you've cited that no just the opposite needs to happen can exactly. you talk a little bit exactly. about that so we need to maintain the high standards for our multilingual learners what we um, must do is provide the opportunity for comprehensible input at all times um, and scaffold the material. Uh, so we as instructors have to be very cognizant about that, um, but definitely do maintain the high standards. Our students, our multilingual students are very capable of learning the material that we have at, at Connecticut Technical Education and Career System. It's, it's fabulous to hear that. It's inspirational, actually. Um, I'd love to talk for a minute about the, the actual seal of biliteracy, Margaret, because not many of us, including me, had ever even heard about that even a year ago. And you, through your creative ability to bring on this particular program into CTEX and really put us on the map, if you will, in terms of a district that offers this very special seal of biliteracy opportunity for our students. Can you tell our audience more about what that is and, and what it actually does to enhance um, our students, both when they're in CTEX, in a trade, and also as a result of earning the seal of biliteracy as they go through their program? So um, the seal of biliteracy bill was passed into a law by Governor Malloy on uh, 2017, on June of, of 2017. And I am very proud to uh, announce to everyone that we were able to roll it out at our district um, last year, school year 21-22. Um, so the seal of biliteracy recognizes the academic effort of our students and the fact that they are maintaining their native language or any second language that they are acquiring, even by mass, even after they master the English language arts. So it provides the students with a special seal that is um, recognized in their diploma and is also a credential that goes in the transcript, making our students more uh, marketable for uh, when they are seniors or, or when they are close to graduate, it makes them better candidate when they are interviewing for their trade opportunities and their careers after school. And it also provides them with the opportunity to receive additional credit when they apply to college. You know, it struck me when I first heard about it that, that I wonder if we are the only school system in Connecticut that, that offers this opportunity. And we were talking earlier, you noted a few other school districts, but not many at this point. I think at this point, well, I can speak with certainty about the districts that I have been in communication with, like Hartford District, Glastonbury, Windsor. Uh, there are many other, New Haven actually, there are many other districts that are also um, implementing the seal of biliteracy and continuing to celebrate the diversity of our students. That's terrific. Is there a specific process that we had to follow as a district in order to implement the seal of biliteracy? Is there a, a sort of a, a, a roadmap that we had to follow? Yes. So we have, um, last year, we, we rolled the program out just with our senior students. This year, we will continue to do that. Um, in the future, it might be different. We have the opportunity to start as early as juniors. 
So we, um, right now, what we are doing at our district is we are providing the students with the opportunity to decide if they want to pursue the seal of biliteracy by completing a survey that was prepared by a group of teachers of our district. Once that is completed and that data is collected, we move forward with the ordering of the assessments. So the requirements to receive the seal of biliteracy is to complete their four uh, credits in English language arts and of course meet the uh, criteria to receive the seal. So the criteria varies based on the language of the exam. And I am very proud to announce that last year we were very successful with the results, although it was our first year and we started late in the year, we started in May, uh, we were able to provide the seal to 162 students in the languages of Spanish, Chinese, French, Portuguese, and Haitian Creole, and we also had Bosnian. So it is a great celebration. I, I, I am very proud of our students, and I do have to announce that some of those students who received the seal were able to acquire career opportunities and job opportunities based on the fact that they had their credential, that credential in their diploma and in their transcripts. I have to share the story with you, Margaret, because you and I didn't have a chance to connect at the end of the year uh, after hearing such wonderful first year outcomes from what our students have been able to accomplish and our staff in terms of the SEAL and piloting this whole piece with seniors. I attended several of our graduations at the end of last year. And in passing out and helping to pass out diplomas to students, there was, as you mentioned, the SEAL right in the diploma and you could see it our students were so proud those who were awarded the seal of biliteracy that there was a difference between their diploma and what would be a regularly and certainly very um, honorable and acceptable document and they were just beaming um, those that i had a chance to ask about what that seal was about they were just so proud um, and a lot of our audience may not realize how much work goes into earning that. You mentioned exams, um, you mentioned uh, changes in curriculum, additions to uh, some of the instructional strategies that are used, and even more important, how that translates in a trade environment. Because it's one thing to offer um, several uh, languages to our students in more of an academic setting, but they also have to adapt and adopt those practices as part of their trade. Can you talk a little bit about what that looks like at CTEX? Of course. That's very unique for us. Yes. So it, to acquire a language is much easier for any language learner to have that comprehensible input, hands on particularly visual aids, we in, at CTEX have the opportunity to provide that to our students. The fact that they work on their trades and they can really work hands-on, they can visualize what they're going to be doing when they graduate if they decide to pursue their careers. Um, that facilitates that language acquisition. And our instructors continue to do and bring the students' strengths into their classrooms, and that's very important. Make our students feel that they are part of our community, our multilingual learners. Continue to embed their histories into the instruction uh, setting, and that will provide that sense of, I am part of this community. They are celebrating my background. They're celebrating my history. So we, I think, at CTEX are doing that very well. Couldn't agree more. You told me a wonderful story earlier um, in comparing uh, measures for mathematics, such as area. Uh, Volume. Yes, exactly. Can you talk a little bit about that? Because yes. you had used an example of some of our students who come from other countries with perhaps more of an agricultural or agrarian background and how our teachers are able to adapt and, as you said, be more inclusive 
um, in terms of what our students' backgrounds might be. That's, it's a wonderful story. I'd love our, our listeners to hear more about that. Exactly. I, I, so in, my, in my, my view is our multilingual learners bring so many different perspectives, and we need to continue to embed that into our instruction. And when we, and we were talking, Dr. Solik and I early, earlier were talking about um, the importance of making the students feel that they're part of the community. So we were talking about volume when you're teaching mathematics, and if you're talking about pyramids, let's just include pictures of the pyramids in Mexico or the pyramids in Egypt. And silos, for example, for kids that have that experience from agriculture or they come from our rural areas, um, because we, we, uh, we bring students from different areas of Connecticut, so that way all students will feel celebrated and they will have that sense of belonging and that will make them feel they're part of the CTEX community. And that will facilitate the language acquisition as well because when you're relaxed, you acquire more knowledge. Absolutely, and it's easier to express that knowledge um, as well. What a wonderful story. Um, so it occurs to me in, in listening to our students' ability to adapt to the classrooms in America, and specifically um, our classrooms at SeaTax. You mentioned um, their ability to feel a real part of the culture, feel connected to the community, feel connected to the SeaTex family, if you will. What is it that our instructors do in addition to adapting the curriculum, let's say? Um, you mentioned, I think, the, the pyramids um, as one of many, many examples. But how do our instructors, particularly in the trades, um, bring that sense of belonging, that sense of equity, that sense of, of uh, security to our students who are coming from other areas of the world? So I think what we do right now and we must continue to do is to be culturally sensitive and always um, bring the families into the picture. It's important that we include the families of our multilingual learners and understand better what is it that those particular students need to, what do we need to do as instructors to facilitate their learning? So I think our, our teachers across CTEX continue to do that and of course there's still work to be done and we will continue heading in that direction however continue to celebrate their um, their backgrounds their histories and embed that into the instruction continue to celebrate and make them part of it just use their strengths and their perspective particularly for our monolingual students so they can learn from their bilingual peers so it sounds almost like um, I'm reflecting back on my own experience for a minute. And as a teacher in uh, Meriden, Connecticut, we would do some activities with our students and staff. We had a world language uh, celebration of culture, let's say. And we would bring, this is middle school level, but it certainly would translate to, to our technical high schools as well. But we would do culturally based activities that allowed our students and staff to really celebrate and experience, as you said so well, Margaret, hands on, mm -hmm. firsthand, what, what is the culture in, in this particular student's life really like and how can we take the, the, the gifts from that culture and really celebrate them? Are we doing uh, um, anything like that in, in our high school settings here at CTEX? Dr. Solek, I am very proud to tell you that, and I have taken part of um, hosting multicultural celebrations in various of our buildings. Those days are a big celebration where all the teachers are part of it. Everyone brings the flag of their, of their origin. Everyone carries something of their country. Uh, something of their heritage. We bring music from different countries. We, we bring clothes from different countries. We bring music, uh, food, and um, it's such a great celebration. The students have the opportunity to learn about different instruments of the world, listen to different music, and music unites countries. So we do that across the district. We have been doing it for a few years and I am looking forward to continue to do that. We call it multicultural celebration, diversity celebration, 
um, but we, it has been done uh, um, for several years now. That is the most valuable experience, I think, for all of our students and staff here at CTEX that we can really celebrate and share in each other's world, right? And as you mentioned, music being just one venue, but music is basically a universal language, mm -hmm. as is food. Exactly. You know, there's nothing, unfortunately, that I won't eat at least once and enjoy thoroughly. And I think that the more we can do that, um, the more we begin to understand each other and the more we begin to develop those relationships that are really the bond that we need going forward, right, in our adult lives. So it's so valuable. Is there a way, Margaret, that I, I know that, that um, those activities go on from school to school at CTEX throughout the year. I'm thinking more specifically in our trade areas. Um, are there creative things happening or, or had you thought about, and I'm sure you have with your team, um, let's say we'll take hairdressing for a minute. Are there ways in which our multicultural or bilingual students can share what happens with hairdressing as an art and a science in a particular country, and how does that compare to our country? Are the styles the same or different? Are the approaches to um, cutting and coloring the same or different? Those kinds of, of aspects to that particular trade, I'm citing that one, um, it, as it seems to translate, I think, culturally, perhaps most directly. But are there ways that, that our students are sharing across the globe around specific trade practices? I, I believe so, Dr. Solik. I What I have seen in the past is that the, the variety and diversity of our students bring a different perspective into the classroom, and they bring new ideas. They bring new suggestions. The style of hair, um, the hair is, is used this way in my country, or the hair is used this way, or my hair is covered in my country, so how can I uh, take care of my hair if it's covered, or how can I take my hair if I live in the Caribbean? So all those, um, and I am just talking about cosmetology and hairdressing in this case, but even with carpentry, houses are different in every single country. So bring that, to bring that into the classroom is very important and use the perspective of those students because bridges are also built different in different countries. So, so that's important to be, to still be aware of that and, 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 and instructors, for instructors to continue to bring that opportunity and, and, and tap on the strengths of our students and their experiences. Absolutely. I can reflect back on a brief but wonderful trip I took to Canada. To Montreal and I remember the first time I drove in with the more rural section just before you get to the city and I noted that every single roof was a metal roof and in our country even in New England it's the exception not the rule that you see homes um, and even businesses with anything but a shingled roof right so there's a there's a difference right across the border into Canada between as you said the way homes are built um, and why? You know, clearly the weather and the demands are very different um, 200, 300 miles north of where we are right now. Hence, yeah, we need metal roofs. Um, and now I hear ads, right, for metal roofers right here in Connecticut um, because we're discovering that, gosh, the practicality of a metal roof from Canada, from Norway, from Russia, from the I northern know, countries. We have flat roofs. So we cannot have flat roofs here. So those are, so those I, so when our students bring that into the classroom, we need to celebrate those ideas. We need to celebrate their, their, um, their histories. We need to celebrate what they have seen, what they grew up with, and embed it into the instruction. Absolutely, this is absolutely fascinating. Speaking of fascinating, I understand that we have students who speak up to four or more languages um, at our high schools. And you were, you were talking a little earlier about what, what languages those are, what countries of origin are those languages, and, and why students are so multilingual uh, in today's world. Um, can you talk a little bit about that, yes. Margaret? I know our listeners are interested to hear that. So I had the opportunity to look at the uh, data of our students, and I am very happy to announce to you, Dr. Solik, that we have across the district students who speak 
44 different languages across the district. That's so amazing. that's amazing to see that we have such a diverse population. Um, we have languages like Spanish, um, we have Arabic, we have Haitian Creole, we have Vietnamese, we have Urdu. So there is a variety of multilingualism out there. So we must continue to celebrate the biliteracy of our students and all the different perspectives that they bring into our classrooms. Absolutely. And this will motivate our students to continue to enroll in our world language classes as well, which is a new program for us, or kind of it's new to the expansion because we have been offering we have been offering world language for a few years now. However, now we're expanding the world language program to all the district. And this, the seal of biliteracy will really promote the interest of our student in continuing to be part of those world language classes. Just, just getting the opportunity to receive that seal that is going to go in their diploma. This is so fascinating, Margaret, and, and much of the success for our students and staff around all of these new programs, the world language program, the seal of biliteracy, is because of your leadership and even more important because of your passion um, and, and your story. It's even more important because of the passion of our instructors. So we have such a passionate group of instructors that really and truly care about advocating for our multilingual students. Margaret, I can't thank you enough for being with us today. We have learned so much in such a short time about what you bring and, and the gifts that you have brought to our district. You continue to bring those. We can't wait to have you back on and, and hear more about the expansion of the seal of white literacy, the growing need and the growing population of our world language students um, as we introduce and welcome them into the CTEX family. Thank you so much, Margaret, for what you do and what you bring to CTEX. Thank you so much for having me and stay tuned because this year my plan is to triplicate the number of students who received the seal of biliteracy last year. Um, we are starting as early as right now um, the process has begun and we we expect to complete the process of assessing our students by the first week of april that way we will have the opportunity to celebrate them and perhaps invite our secretary of education to celebrate with us we can't wait thank you so much thank listener you. thank you margaret thank you so much thank you for having me it's been an honor